So what did you do? You like you'd go to what a bar or something like that. Or you'd listen. You'd, you'd be like kind of like literally ear to the ground, and then literally, yeah. And I then mean, you'd go up after the like. What do you do? You're like, hi, I'm Eric Alfred. Like that's like, exactly what I did. I you know we we had one of the first you know <laughs> it was funny we in our area in music we had one of the first kind of internet connections there. So. There, there was no MySpace. There, right. were, there was no Facebook. There's no Twitter. There was no Pinterest. There was like, you, you barely could find anybody online. So you still had to go out. You, I mean, nine to five, we did all of our work contacting the media, trying to get previews and interviews and photos in the newspaper and photo opportunities and our songs on the radio and our videos played on much music and so forth. And then at night, and then we would eat dinner. And then at night, from eight o'clock to one, we would be out scouring the city, awesome. looking for really great bands. And it wasn't, you know. It wasn't crappy bands that had a lot of money to pay for us. It was really great bands that that we thought had an actual chance of getting heard and being seen. Because, um, you know, you can be a really crappy band and a great publicist and you're not going to get anything. Right. You know, you have to be able to still be great. And being good isn't good enough anymore because the competition is so fierce. Now your competition isn't another band, let's say, in Toronto. Your competition is a band in Japan, right. in the UK, in Australia, because there's only so much time that people will spend, you know, scouring, looking for great new music. So back then, that's what I did. I said, hey, my name is Eric Alper, and I have a company, PR. I really would love to work with you guys. And back then, we did everything. We did everything from T-shirt manufacturing to booking shows to quasi-management to anything that the band needed to be done because we just wanted to get the experience. Right. and kind of make our mistakes as fast as we could to get over them so that we can be the, the best that we can possibly be. And then we would come home at 2 o'clock in the morning, exhausted, and then do it, it all, all over, over again. again. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And at awesome. the time, we, we started off with zero bands. We didn't know, you know, we, we, we quickly had a couple of bands on our roster. By the year we were, you know, in Toronto, we had seven or eight of the top venues in, in, in Toronto we were doing a lot of bars and restaurants because not only could they afford us, but they fed us in food, right, which that's was so great. Craft dinner. In the beginning, yeah. <laughs> it was great because it was one way to impress a band back then was, hey, let's go for lunch and we'll talk, knowing that the restaurant was going to take up the bill. And that's what we did. I mean, we were crafty that way. That, you know, um, But you know, then we, we did North by Northeast a couple of times, the, the music festival and conference here, and we had 17 bands playing wow. um, in one year. And that was the year that kind of you know, made me realize that I could actually do this for a living and, and keep going. And I guess I'm too stupid to get out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm glad you're stupid. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, me very, too. Very... Me too. My parents, you know, they, <laughs> they, so they, they, they still had no idea what I do, but, you know, they were they do were you, happy that I was doing something. Do you get frustrated you know? with that? Do you ever, you're like trying to be like, hey, guess what? Guess what? I like, you know, I hung out with Ringo Starr and they're like, that's nice. That, that's nice. Like, <laughs> it's funny. They, they had an office uh, in, tr in downtown Toronto. Um, in a really cool hip area where a lot of musicians would come and see them. It was a driver vehicle license office. So whenever you need to get your license renewed, they would, you know, you would go to my parents' office. And it was on College Street in Toronto, which is a, a, all the bands hang out there and live there. And so they would always come home and say, oh, you know, Bruce Coburn came on by and you should go sign him. And it's like, I think he's already signed, signed, you know. <laughs> or like, you know, Our Lady Peace was here and it's like, they're, they're done. But then they would go out to, you know, I, I, a bar that served chicken wings and have a cover band playing in the background and they would hand off my business card to them and I would get these strange calls the next day <laughs> saying, your parent told me that I should call you and that you'd sign me to the label and I'm like, nah, you guys stop doing this. And stuff. That's awesome. But they, they were really, you know, they're, they're funny that way. They, they it, Whenever, whenever somebody, when, whenever one of the artists would win a Grammy or a Juno, they would always tell their friends that I had won the Juno award. Aww. So, which was really cool. So when Bruce Coburn actually won a Juno and we were working with them, they were like, "Eric won a Juno award last night," and they were like, "Oh, that's great," you know. And like all their friends had no idea what a Juno award was and didn't really care. But you know, I that's made like them so proud cute. for that one moment. Oh and my stuff. god, so that is. I'm still looking after my first Juno. That's so cute. Yeah. Um, so, oh, were you ever like nervous? Like this is, the, you know, because people day. don't. It, yeah, and you every can, day. It, you're sitting there and it's like, okay, so I'm just picturing young Eric Alper. And, yeah. and the bar, and it's like the band stops playing and you're like, ugh. Yeah, like, I, really? I still do. I, I, get, I get nervous because there's no rules on what to do. I mean, there's rules of life and there's rules of, of business, you know, and, and, and everybody knows them. It's like, be really nice to people, don't suck or suck less. <laughs> 
and and um, um, you know write press releases well. You know, mm -hmm. write the first line as if they're not going to read your second line. Write your second line as if they're not going to read your third line. Just little tips like that. I think everybody kind of knows in the industry. Right. But every day, you know, when I'm going up the elevator to the office, it's still like, what what fires are going to happen today, and what awesome stuff is going to happen today, and and that's in the passion of it. I've never walked around like a know it all. Right. I've never when I get asked to do interviews or or talk about. Um, you know certain topics. I, there's always that that nagging thing in my head going. You're a phony. You're a fake. Oh, you know. Man. And I think I think that that's good. I think it's a good voice because it kind of gets you a little bit level-headed and um, and it, it it keeps me at least burning the fire that there's I don't know everything right. and and that there's a world of information out there that that I, I'd love to find out more about because everything changes. What happened and worked five years ago, specifically in the music industry, doesn't work right now. What happened 10 years ago, it's an afterthought, you know? And so people who say that they have all the answers, it, I think they're lying, because I don't think anybody really knows how to sell and consume these days, because the audience is thinking one thing right now, the industry is thinking the other way, the distributors are thinking this way, the labels are thinking this way. And, <clears throat> and I think that's not just for the music industry. I think that's what's happening with the book publishing, yeah. with the short film industry, with films, with, with everything, with, with every kind of business. Everything constantly changing. I think you can't be, um, you, just, you just can't be thinking, that's it, I'm done. I've learned right. everything I need to know. And, I'm an expert. And, and ah, I'm an expert yes. and I'm a guru. <laughs> and um, because that will last you for about five minutes. Right.